Hello everybody, I am Alexander Williamson, and you are watching The Secret History of Living in Your Aquarium. Now, today I wanted to keep things fun and lighthearted. If you watch the channel regularly, you know that I, I love my deep dives, my species spotlights, and long history videos uh, with lots of details and, and dates and facts. Uh, they can be pretty nerdy. Today we're going to skip over all the usual details and we're going to count down my favorite 10 rare, overlooked, and beautiful fish that are in the nano fish spectrum of the hobby. Now they're on this list both for their personality and their beauty, and I hope everyone watching will enjoy this. Hopefully some of you guys will learn some new trivia uh, if you know these fish, or if you don't, you'll get to learn some cool new fish. So if you want to hear full videos on any of these fish, uh, species spotlights and so forth, uh, just go ahead and check my channel and uh, you can also find out details on care and breeding them and all that with those videos. Now for the few species that aren't in those videos, uh, let me know in the comments below if you'd like to hear uh, more about a certain species. And while you're in the comments, uh, drop me a line with what your favorite 10 nano fish of color or interesting behavior that might be overlooked are. So, my friends, let us begin. Let us start the top 10 countdown. And as we get into it, if you could just give me a thumbs up if you enjoy it, thumbs down if you don't. Just let me know. Give me some feedback uh, down below, and I would love that. But let's kick it off with number 10. And this is one that you may know as it's become very popular in recent years, and that is the Neon Green Rasbora, also known as the Kubota Rasbora. Its Latin name is Microdivario Kubotai, or Kubotai. And its name hints at its small nano size, Microdivario in Latin, you know, hints at small. Growing no larger than the size of like an ember tetra, this fish is perfect for any five gallon or larger planted tank. Uh, you want a group of six or so individuals of this species and their neon green colors and inquisitive nature make their little groups kind of like a little uh, Boy Scout troop just uh, going through and investigating every little thing in the tank. They're very inquisitive little creatures. Now, they are an active social fish, as I just said, and they enjoy a well-planted community tank. Uh, in the wild, they're found in the Myanmar and Thailand border region, and they're found in small creeks and streams uh, that are then flooded out into the forest during the monsoon season. This means that they like very soft water that has a fair amount of oxygen and lots of botanicals. So, the more densely you plant their tank, the more you will see them, in that if you have a dense background or corners, they'll have a place to run to and feel safe, and they will come out into the open, into the center of the tank, if, if you uh, furnish the tank like that. So the Kubota Rasbora is a relatively new addition to the uh, aquarium hobby, and they almost glow like a full glass of Mountain Dew. They're semi-transparent, and the light passing through their bodies literally causes the entire fish to glow a bright and brilliant yellow and green. So they're a really cool one. Now, number nine on our list, hailing from Papua New Guinea, is the Pseudomagill Luminatus. This fish has a longer common name than a Latin name for once, which is the red neon blue-eyed rainbow fish. So, sometimes confused with the Pseudomagill pasci, these fish are one of the most beautiful in our hobby, sporting a beautiful honey-colored yellow and orange body with a stunning, gorgeous uh, blue iridescent reflective line along their back. These are an incredible, peaceful little fish. Now, they're very active and fun to keep and very easy to breed. The males will show off all throughout the day, and especially in the mornings and evenings, 
as they spin around in circles, uh, like the guys in the knife fight in that uh, Michael Jackson video, Bad, uh, the music video, uh, where they lunge at each other and spin around in circles. Well, they kind of do that by flaring their fins and twirling around with one another, and it's really uh, an entertaining thing to watch uh, if you ever get a chance to keep these fish. Anyhow, it's a daily occurrence, and in open water uh, within your tank, these awesome little fish uh, will swim around a great deal, and they're only going to top out at about an inch and a half long, and they'll mostly take up the middle and top part of the tank, and they're fine with bright lights, which is kind of nice because it illuminates just how beautiful they are. Now, females spawn every single day, and they leave little sticky golden eggs uh, on different materials in the tank, so you can spawn them with a mop and then pull that every day and then hatch the babies separately. But uh, they are also probably the best fish to start spawning if you've never spawned uh, anything other than, say, live bears or guppies. They're probably the best egg scattered to start spawning. Now, number eight on our list is the Gold Ring Danio, or the Brachio Danio uh, Tin Winai, named after the Thai wholesaler Tin Win that first discovered these fish in the Thai and Burmese mountain regions. This fish is one that video and photos can simply not do justice to. Behind the famous Celestial Pearl Danio, these are probably my favorite Danio species, and as one of the smallest Danios out there in the hobby, they only reach about an inch, inch and a quarter or so in length, and they're far less nippy and aggressive than Zebra Danios, Leopard Danios, Kythit Danios, Glow Light Danios, like those other species that are a bit rambunctious and sometimes can tear at fins of something like a betta in their tank or guppies, for instance. Now, they have a metallic gold body and they are decorated with neatly organized rows of little black dots with a silver belly that shimmers and sparkles. They are a peaceful Daniel and if kept in a planted tank. They are really fun to watch shoal and school around the decor and the plants. And they behave a little differently than most other Danios in that they sort of act like Pseudomagill rainbow fish. And they hang out a lot of times during the day in the top of the water and two males will go at it showing off spinning around in circles like I just talked about. And uh, they sparkle and glow and if being fed a good diet of frozen food or live food, they actually have these iridescent blue and burgundy tones that you just barely catch a hint of. They're an absolutely beautiful fish that you definitely need to see in person. Now number seven on our list is going to be the purple tetra, which is a terrible name, uh, the Hyphosobricon matei. And these are an amazing little fish, similar in size to an ember tetra and one of the few sky blue and or lavender colored fish in our hobby. They're endemic to the Rio Orinoco watershed and the uh, Colombian and Venezuelan rainforest, specifically tributaries of the Meta River, hence their Latin name of Hyphosobricon mate. Uh, very, very peaceful fish and somewhat timid actually. So they should be maintained in a group of six or more. If you keep nine or ten, they stop becoming so timid and all of a sudden they come out and, and show off and they color up a lot better. You can keep them with Corydoras, Neon Tetras, Ember Tetras, Rasboras, any small to medium fish. They're going to get along with great. Now, if kept in a bright lit uh, tank with nowhere to hide, they'll actually be kind of pale in color and stressed and they'll probably try to remain hidden if possible, rarely venturing out of the corners and hiding places. However, if they're maintained in a group of at least six or seven, and it's a thickly planted uh, tank, they will come out and they'll occupy the middle level of the water, the top level, the bottom level. They'll go all over the place and they'll show off their beautiful colors that actually range from sky blue to electric like metallic turquoise all the way over to lavender and a true purple color from some collection points with a red highlight on their eye in many of 
the uh, variants when you see them. Now, they're not super common in the hobby, but it's pretty awesome when they do show up. Now, number six is my all-time favorite nano fish, the panda loach. These are hands down my favorite species to keep. Why aren't they number one on the list? Well, they're not colorful. And uh, although they're not colorful, that black and white pattern, the stripe pattern on them, really stands out. And fish under 18 months old actually end up... Uh, keeping that pattern for a time but then in some populations they lose it and they start looking like a brown to off cream colored uh, chain link fence over uh, kind of a yellowish base tone and so uh, since they lose that look uh, I couldn't include them as higher on the list but I will include them here and I have to say that they are extremely peaceful and they are actually so peaceful that I've kept them with Neocaridina shrimp, Blue Dream, Cherry Shrimp, you name it. And they don't even seem to eat the babies. The brand new babies will sit on their noses and, uh, and they just sit there and uh, take it. One incredibly endearing behavior that these little loaches exhibit is what I call the cuddle puddle. And that's where this social little fish gets together at night and they tend to pile on top of each other and sleep in a little group. And one or two of the males will sleep on a leaf or a branch in the tank if there is one above the rest. And they'll stay alert watching for predators throughout the night in rotations, which is really cool to see. Now they're always exploring their environment and they're like little water puppies. They stay very teeny, uh, under two inches full grown, and a lot of them will stay right at that inch size or so, with that bold pattern actually staying, depending on their collection point. Now, they mostly eat biofilm and algae, and it's microscopic, very, very teeny stuff that they're combing through algae to eat. And they're from China uh, in the wild, and they live in hill stream uh, situations. So they like a hill stream style tank with soft water and subtropical temperatures. So 68 to 72 degrees Fahrenheit is ideal for them. And if you decide to keep them, I highly recommend you keep 10 or more in a group. Now I know they're expensive at somewhere between 20 and $30 a fish usually, but this is an investment that I promise you, you will love. So uh, check them out. A couple of the sponsors that I work with linked in the description have them from time to time and uh, they carry them at a good price and they're ethically sourced, which is really important with these because they also live in one of China's national parks where they should not be kept from or collected from, uh, but sometimes poaching goes on and makes it to the market. Now. They also enjoy a tank with lots of smooth stones, a little bit of water flow and motion, and it, like I said, with the biofilm and algae diet, you want it to be uh, fairly established. All right, guys, well, we are over halfway through now, uh, going in on number five, the coral red pencil fish, Nanostomus Morton Thaleri, and it's named after Martin Morton Thaleri, <laughs> who discovered this species in 2010. These are an electrically red fish with one of the most colorful and vivid reds that I've seen out there in our hobby. The only thing I can think of is maybe a chili rasbora or turcana jewel cichlid um, or crystal red uh, tetra. Those are the only things that come near it in its color and uh, majesty. Now they have a little wider body than a uh, chili rasbora, and they grow up to about an inch and a half max. Uh, some stay at around an inch. Pencilfish in general are great tank mates for, for uh, breeding pairs of dwarf cichlids like apistos also, or cribs, and uh, because their mouths are so small, hence the, the Latin name nano or small, stoma, and that means mouth, uh, they are found in uh, flooded forests along sluggish tributaries of specifically the Rio Nene in Peru and they are a loose schooling fish that tends to shoal in fairly large numbers uh, out in the wild so make sure that uh, 
make sure that when you put them in your tank that you have at least eight or so of them uh, so that you can see the best color possible and the best behavior possible because they're a really fun one to watch. Now, to make them feel most at home, keep them in a really well-planted tank with soft uh, black water biotope conditions, lots of botanicals, submerged woody structures, and leaf litter, and you will get a lot of enjoyment out of this fish. That is for sure. Now, I also want to mention its newest cousin, which is the Sinipa, or super coral red pencil fish that was just discovered in 2021 in Peru. Uh, and they're a really awesome fish. However, pretty expensive still and uh, kind of hard to find, uh, if nothing else. All right, guys, coming in at number four, the marbled zebra uh, autosynclus or the marble uh, autosynclus, the zebra autosynclus. Uh, there's lots of different combinations as common names, but what we know it by scientifically is autosynclus kokama. And many people know about the helpful algae eaters that we simply call autos or autosynclus in millions of fish tanks around the world. However, many of the folks out there don't know that there are over a dozen different types of autosynclus in the wild. From the giant autosynclus to the red-tailed auto to the orange bumblebee auto, there are all kinds and they all do the same thing and keep your tank clear of algae and clean of slime and biofilm that accumulates on the glass and hardscape. Now, I think these ones are really beautiful in that they have a metallic silver body and ornate swirls that almost look like tribal tattoos, like, you know, Dwayne the Rock Johnson has some Hawaiian or Samoan, New Zealand, whatever, Maori uh, tribal tattoos. Sometimes they're a little smoky looking, sometimes they're very bold, like tiger stripes. It just depends on the collection point. But these are a really cool fish if you can find it. And uh, since they can be hard to find, I just want to mention that this fish and any other fish I've talked about today, uh, I have some uh, helpful links in the description to ethical uh, fish wholesalers and resellers and importers that really sell some beautiful fish species, lots of plants, lots of uh, inverts that you're not going to find anywhere else. Uh, places like Aquatic Arts, uh, like redfishbluefish.shop and also Dan's Fish. And I've got special deals going with uh, all of them. So check out the uh, discounts at any given time on my latest videos. Always going to be in the description. You help the channel out a little bit. You get a discount of anywhere between 10 and 20% depending on what's going on that month. And uh, you're supporting people who I personally know that are doing it the right way and uh, getting these animals and caring for these animals in just top-notch conditions. All right, so back to the autosynclus. Just like all the other uh, rare autosynclus or unusual ones in the hobby, they still do that cleanup crew role. And exactly like normal autosynclus, uh, they add a little extra flash at the end of the day to your aquarium. And I think they're kind of cool because of that. Now, it kind of opens the gate for all the different, the red tail and the orange one, which, by the way, its Latin name is literally Robocop. Go look it up. Uh, <laughs> it, I don't know who named it or what that's about, but it's spelled Robocop, just like the movie. And... Uh, yeah, so check out some of the autos that are out there, but I'm going to go with that one for number four today. Now, number three is an incredible fish. The Somfong Rasbora, or Trigonostigma uh, Somfongzai. This is one of my all-time favorite fish, period. And it is an elegant, yet subtly beautiful fish, with males showing off a fiery red, metallic, kind of copper color, uh, down their sides and a line through it and the females sporting a metallic gold into kind of brass or silver colored line down their body and both of them almost appear to have a holographic strip laid over all of that that gives it this iridescent shimmer of like rainbow speckles or, or glitter 
And they are one of the most beautiful, they're very understated, yet once you start staring at them, you can't look away. So the Somfongzi Rasbora are also a fascinating fish. And by the year 1970, they were believed to be extinct in the wild. However, in 2006, a Thai-based fish wholesaler sold a batch of Harlequin Rasboras to a German fish importer and a sharp-eyed employee noticed in a batch of 5,000 harlequin rasboras three fish that were different. So soon it was revealed that these three different fish happened to be two male and one female somfong rasboras that had not been seen in over 40 years alive. So the German importer tried to find out uh, what other fish had been caught in the area, where these fish had been caught, and they weren't able to find any more fish when they sent parties to go try to figure it out. So meanwhile, back in Germany, some very talented fish keepers were able to breed this literal single female. And from there, they bred out thousands of fish. And believe it or not, uh, after the fact, they kind of reduced the amount of inbreeding by being very strategic in which which of the fish bred with which later on and heavy culling but needless to say now they are available all around the world and all from the adam and eve of the species all right so number two on the list is going to be an incredible fish the red crystal tetra or the hyphosobricon harold schultzai and this is an expensive tetra at $25 to $35 in most shops. And it is incredibly red. This one probably beats out the Turkana Jewel Cichlid and the earlier entry on our list, the Coral uh, Pencil Fish. These are incredible. Just take a look at these. This isn't bumped up in saturation or anything like that. They are easy to care for and should be kept in groups of six or more with large schools making them more outgoing, more bold, and brighter. Feeding them a diet of frozen food and live food in combination uh, with carotenoids that bring out those red colors in all living creatures uh, is a great way to keep them looking their best and their healthiest. It also improves their immune system, so there's no drawback to feeding your fish live or frozen food that's top-notch. So, that's a fish that I can't get enough of, and uh, I think if you really need a bright fish that you can see from 50 yards away from the aquarium, that's it. Alright guys, we've arrived here, number one. Uh, so, number one, often overlooked yet incredibly beautiful nano fish. The Flame Tetra, Hyphosobricon flamius, also known as the uh, Red and Orange Tetra or the Von Rio Tetra. It is a small tetra, only growing to around an inch, inch and a half long, and sporting some unbelievably vivid yellow and orange, yellow and red colorations, and sometimes tiger stripes laid over that in the wild, depending on the collection point. It is a beautiful fish. First introduced as an aquarium fish in 1920 in Hamburg, Germany, formally described by 1924. Today, large numbers are bred in captivity, but the remaining wild population of Southeast Brazil is highly threatened and unfortunately facing extinction which is all the more reason we should keep them from ethically source and sustainably raise captive bred fish uh, like the ones you can source uh, from the folks in the description and pinned in the comments below. Now these fish, just like the last fish, the crystals, uh, the crystal reds, you can see these from 50 feet away from your tank. From outside my house, you can see the ones in this tank at night and people including my neighbors have stopped me and said what in the heck is that fish they are quite affordable usually being four to six dollars and they like soft water well planted tanks and a diet of frozen food but they can live off of flake food 
They're going to look their best, though, with live and frozen food with those carotenoids, just like any red or yellow fish does. So, I highly recommend them. I recommend getting at least six of them, and if you can do ten, that's even better. You get a really beautiful display of them weaving in and out of the, the greens and yellows of your planted tank, the reds too, and they just pop, it just highlight all the color in your tank amazingly. Well, that is it. That is the countdown. So I hope you guys enjoyed my top 10 most beautiful and often overlooked nano fish. Um, if you're enjoying this style of light video, uh, fluffier video with more imagery, let me know in the comments also. Uh, I know my videos are dense, as I said in the beginning, and we can all use a break from time to time and just kind of talk about what our favorite fish are, and that's what I wanted to do today. And if you want to uh, encourage more of this content or more of the nerdy content, let me know in the comments, but feel free to subscribe and you'll be alerted to all of the future content coming out on this channel. Uh, and if you're feeling extra spicy, extra fishy, nerdy, and uh, excited, you can uh, help me out by using any of the affiliate links in the description, or you can become a member for $1.99 and get all of the behind the scenes access uh, each month under the community tab, as well as all sorts of other perks. We do a lot of giveaways and things like that too. Uh, and that's all part of being part of this community with the secret history living in your aquarium. All right, guys, I'm out of here. It's been long enough of a video. I hope you guys are all doing well and have a wonderful day. I will see you next time.